the last part of chapter zero is teaching you how to mathematically play with concepts or objects. So in order to learn mathematical playing and cultivate that attitude, let's start with some prerequisite materials that you will eventually be learning. If you were asked to plot coordinates of points on a one-dimensional space, they would belong on a number line like you see here. You basically have tick marks that you can label as 0, 1, whatever, and then you can count where your points land. You can do an extension of that, and that would be plotting the points in a two-dimensional space. Now you can go left, right, and up and down. And so that's the Cartesian coordinate system. And extending that or playing with that in three dimensions would be now you can go up, right, forward, backwards, and up and down in a three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system. So that's what playing in mathematics will look like. You're constantly asking what happens if you change dimensions? What happens if you make small changes? Extension questions also do exactly the same, but you look at concepts and see how parallel structures would change when you go from one dimension to two to three. So for example, distance between points on the number line is the absolute value of the difference, or you can write them as a square root of difference square. So here we have two points, negative two and two. Difference between them is four. So this would be four squared 16, and square root 16 is four. So that's the same as doing absolute value of two minus negative two. Also, solutions to equation x squared equals 4 on a number line would be these two points. In other words, you're looking at negative 2 and 2 as solutions to x squared equals 4. What would, how would all of these change when you move to two dimensions? Remember, we already saw before playing was going from number line to Cartesian plane. The concept of distance then would actually be using the Pythagorean theorem, and it'll be difference of x squared plus difference of y squared square root, instead of just difference of x squared. And the equation that represents all points that are equidistant from the origin and a distance of two away, in one dimensions, you had x squared equals four. In two dimensions, you have x squared plus y squared equals four. And before, in one dimension, you had just two points, two and negative two on either side of zero, which are two away from zero. Whereas now you have all points that belong to the circle that are two away from zero, zero. So in three dimensions then now, remember, you can go forward, backwards, left, right, up and down. So it would have a z component. You are in three dimensional space. And then the equation that will represent all points exactly two units away from the origin, or 0, 0, 0, would have x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. Noticing parallel structures like that, even if the concept is not part of your course, you can still ask the questions and investigate it. This will cultivate critical thinking. So that brings us to the end of chapter zero, and now you're ready to start your journey to learn algebra. And good luck on your journey.